Так. Going into the fields for the first time, they lined us up, gave us each a road to cut and start us all at the same time, like some kind of race. The field pusher warned us that we have to cut a ton of cane every hour, but your body is not really used to it. The experienced guys who do it before know their bodies will get up to speed, but the new guys have the field pusher behind them saying, one, two, pile, one, two, pile, faster. You have to stack the key and put the trash on one side and leave a walking spear with no stubble showing, still keeping the pace. These guys really make you hustle. And if you don't make it up to speed in eight days, they send you back home. The selection starts by blood, urine, eye, tooth, chest, x-ray also. And they like to see a little dark spot like this one especially. And your hand must be tough, real tough. And your, your, your joints or your finger must be strong to hold the cane, to and from. Hold it, cut it, put it on the pile. Hold it, cut it, put it on the pile. First time I came, I've been cutting, cutting, cutting. Boss come and say, well, I have to go a little faster. I say, man, this is a hard work, and I've been there working, working, till I cut my work out. And some of the guys got faint in the field, it said they you know, the sun is hot in our back, and I say, well, this is America, you know? <laughs> See a lot of these people have been working for me for oh years, and of course they work good. You'd be surprised. Some of them's lawyers, some of them's doctors, brick layers, carpenters. They're all different type of trades, but because of their country's poor, you know, they have to make a living. And they and they're most of them's pretty good people. But the ones, if we get some bad people, we just submit their names to the Jamaican government that we don't want them back, and they don't come back. They may come to another camp, but they won't come to our camp. When the rice truck came at the field, you can't sit and have a, your lunch properly. You have to stand up. They don't like when you sit and have it. They said yeah, you are using the company time when you are sitting and having lunch. You have to just go back to work and work. got to, to pay all of the insurance and the transportation, et cetera, besides just the cutting of it. It's the other outside cost, the mess halls there for and the lodging them and feeding them. But if we didn't have the Jamaicans, we could harvest it because the local people would not do it. Dear Mr. Bailey, compliments of this season to you. How is it over there? Is it much better than in Jamaica? Remember, Things is hard out here, so please try and see what you can get out of it. But please don't work too much. Take things easy. The children is all right for the time. Until I hear from you, love, Mrs. Bailey. I go way out. I go, I cover the northwest. The northeast and the southwest, and I'll hardly pick up a can unless it's out on the, in the cube. And I'm passing along with my boogie because I don't want everything. I just want enough to live for myself, and I'm just barely living. I couldn't stand for everybody. I'm only saying what happened to me. 
And that was a minute one. To come thinking one thing and found something altogether different. But I arrived at the camp they called Bear Beach on December the 1st, on a Sunday, 1941. And that's where I spent my first night, in the camp, in Clewiston. Each fall after cotton is picked, cane harvest draws an army of laborers from the cotton country. Cane harvest is a social institution. Thousands of housemaids and cooks beg leave from town and city employers and respond to the hereditary urge to go back to the plantation and work at Make and Grindin. It is a time of good fellowship and festivity that for generations has been associated with the harvest. They wake us up around two and three o'clock. They had a shack roused. His name was Needle Slim, where I was. And he'd hear him come around every morning, oh, wake up, oh. get up. If you come on, go with me, it won't be no running. Falling down and looking back and stumbling. In other words, if you didn't get up, when the shack roused, aroused you and went on to the dining room, he come around with a cane knife and a blackjack, beating you out the bed. And if you run out the door, it was one standing with a rifle, making you get back in line, and you were gone. I found that it was almost same as a prison. But it wasn't nothing I could do but go along with the crew, because we all was in the same boat. You couldn't run. Wasn't a way to run right, right then. Okay, Sam, 66 cents. Thank you, bud. 66 cents. That is exactly 22 cents. That's two pounds. days' work, isn't it, Sam? That's two days' work. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you want to hand that up? an update on the crop this year uh, and it's a nice uh, situation to be sitting up here telling you that it's the largest crop we've ever had in history we harvested 400,000 acres of sugar cane and produced approximately 1.48 million tons which is a lot of sugar 43,000 people were employed either directly or indirectly with the industry and the economic impact on the glades in South Florida was 1.5 billion dollars. Those numbers don't sound a whole lot but I tell you what, when you think about the people that live around the, the communities in Lake Okeechobee area, it makes you realize how important this industry is and we're just glad to be here, we're glad everybody came out to support the festival and I gotta tell you that in two months time or three months time this was put together, just wait till next year and the following year this is gonna get bigger and better and we hope the industry gets bigger and better along with it. Thank you very much. <laughs>